Welcome to the top six games that kept me from choking the chicken. Now let me explain. These are basically the top six games that you intended to play for 10 more minutes going from point A to point B to complete your goal, but somewhere along the lines you got stuck doing C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and K. Oh, and by the way, you somehow became a vampire. We all know these types of games. These are the games that at midnight, and you have to be at work at 6 a.m., you decide you're just gonna do one more mission, and three hours later, you've either maxed out on souls, gambled your way to max money, or you've just randomly wandered off and became a werewolf slash vampire slash some bizarre ass hybrid that belongs in Twilight. But come on, guys, we all know what guys do. We don't go to work, we don't go out. We choke chickens. It's, it's, it's what we do. It's, it's a favorite pastime of most males that I, I'm aware of. And any guy who says that he doesn't choke a chicken, he, he's just lying. Yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go with that. Yep. Yeah, that, that's pretty much, that's pretty much what guys do when we're not playing video games. Yep. That's, that's pretty much it. Video games and chickens. So for today, we're gonna restrict this to open world games because those are the best games to get lost in for hours at a time. And this is entirely based upon my experiences. These are the things that kept me glued and ignoring friends, family, these videos, playing other games, and even the chicken. Now, as usual, we're gonna auto remove two titles from this. And the two titles that we're gonna remove this time are Watch Dogs, because right now, I would just outright be very biased towards this game. It's literally on pause right now while I do this video. And between stopping random muggers, gambling, having every phone in my vicinity for free music, cars, and money, I mean, guys, I literally spent three hours walking around the city just hacking everything and beating on people who would rat me out. And for the record, our standby gameplay that you're watching right now while we lead up to the normal list, that's Watch Dogs. I'm also going to remove Grand Theft Auto V, because this would be the auto number one. I mean, come on, anybody who's played this knows this game is life. It's not a game. You can do anything, and even if you start to get bored, you can go online and do everything with everybody else. And then when that gets boring, you just go back to doing it offline. You could literally live on this game and be okay with that if there was a way to make an income. So it would be our auto number one. So I'm gonna remove it so we can have a more interesting list. Number six. Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2. Now some of you may not realize this, and as a matter of fact, one of my friends was like, what, that's open world? But Dark Souls 1 and 2 is very open world. You can literally wander just about anywhere and die. But what made these the ultimate time wasters for me is the farming, which leads to so many more interesting adventures. In both games, with the right locations, tools, and plans, you can farm souls and items for days. And that's exactly what this did to me, and still to this day does to me when I decide to pick it up and go ahead and play. It normally starts with something along the lines of, hey, I'm just gonna go get a quick 10,000 souls for such and such, or whatever I'm trying to do. And then on the way there, I get into two PvP matches, help three people out in co-op, stop and farm the bikini armor off a random monster for about two hours, and in the end, I barely make my goal before I decide, oh man, that guy I fought had a kick-ass weapon, gee golly, I should go farm that weapon. I actually do say gee golly in my head. And then I'm off to the opposite side of the world, starting the whole cycle over. This game has caused delays in videos, delays in my life, and I've lost whole evenings to this endless farming. Just 10 more minutes and I'll swear I'll turn off this game and take care of that chicken. Number five. Red Dead Redemption. While I love farming in Dark Souls, nothing can absorb your time like being a cowboy in Red Dead Redemption. The reason why I enjoyed this one so much is because you actually feel like a cowboy. You complete some Old West quests, you go hunting, you go gambling, but the overall feeling you get as being James Marston is the incredible one of, I'm a goddamn cowboy. Now I'm gonna go shoot everyone I meet. This one ranks so highly because of the multiplayer options. Just when you're done, just when you're like, it's midnight and I should go to bed. And you know what, I did all my challenges, I hunted all the animals, I, I go, went ahead and robbed the stagecoach. Your buddy will hit you up and say, hey, forget about your chicken, man. It's time to hop online and lose the rest of your night to missions, death matches, and just playing running around in an open world shooting each other in the goddamn face. This game is so engrossing that chickens get forgotten about for days with this one. Number four. Far Cry 3. And speaking of games that eat up your time with hunting and gathering and just being a jerk to every living creature that you can find in a game, let's talk about my number three choice, Far Cry 3. Now this game is truly a game that I never use my fast travel, and the reason I didn't was simple. I would hunt every animal. 
clear every outpost, find every piece of loot from point A to point B. I was just so interested in this island and the Civil War struggles that I needed to see and experience more. Plus things like the hidden World War II bunkers and such just kept me going like, there has to be something more in this island, I have to know what's going on. I felt like I was on that show Lost every time I would turn the game off, and I just need to get back to that island. I, get, I can't be away from the island, I have to get back and choke the chickens. Number three. Assassin's Creed 4. I know I'm already a self-proclaimed Assassin's Creed addict, but this is the first time in any Assassin's Creed game, hell, any game at all, that I just didn't give two shits about the missions. This isn't to say that the main story wasn't interesting or addicting. Oh no, I loved every minute of my adventure as Pirate Edward Kenway. But the moment I was given my boat and the ability to just freely sail to any island, hunt any animal, and dock at just about any port, I was taken back to the old days of Sid Meier's Pirates and literally spent my first week on this game just sailing around and exploring. Every time I would start thinking about going to a main mission, I would come across something like the White Whale Community Events and be sidetracked for hours trying to upgrade my harpoon to hunt those whales. I don't know about you guys, but there was a feeling of, I'm an incredible pirate and you shall not take me down. But then again with all the open sea sailing, maybe I could have just handled the chicken problem and sailed at the same time. Number two. Fallout Universe. Oh, and uh, Number one. Elder Scrolls Universe. Why did I do it in that voice? Elder Scrolls Universe. All right, originally these were two separate entries onto this list, but they're on here on the exact same spot for the same reason. And any fan of these series understands exactly what I'm talking about. When you play both of these games, you literally, and this isn't even a joke, waypoint your mission and then hit every goddamn point of interest on the way. It gets really bad when you're supposedly on a time mission like, go here or we kill the girl by nightfall. Sure, but first let me stop and gamble, hunt for some meat to cook, clear this cave, clear this fortress, wander back to town and turn in my goods. Oh, and I'm on a very long side quest, so let me wrap this one up first too. When you play either of these titles, you basically have to reserve an entire night at a time and be like, yep, tonight is insert Bethesda open world game here. And the reason why I originally had these separate and why I rank Elder Scrolls a little higher is simple. In the Fallout world, it's a desert wasteland. So you'll sometimes spend entire large chunks of time literally with nothing interesting except for the radioactive things that you kill. But in the Elder Scrolls world, I cannot think of a single time when I crossed an uninteresting segment or an area that had nothing in it. I mean, I love the, the lore of Fallout more than I like Elder Scrolls, but there definitely are some open spaces in Fallout that kind of got me slightly bored and you start like beelining for your next interesting objective. Elder Scrolls is just so amazing because there's always something going on, always something around you from trees to mountains to caves that I've literally just lost myself in this universe. Hell, I've even lost myself in ESO as much as fans of the Elder Scrolls franchise hate that game, the same concept applies. I'll be wandering around and be like, ooh, a cave. Oh look, 20 other people in this cave and it's not fun and interesting, but I made it to the cave. Now, you're probably gonna go, well, isn't that every game on this list? Can't you just lose yourself to wandering around on any game on this list? Well, yes, but if you wander in Dark Souls, you're just farming typically. And if you wander in Red Dead Redemption, you're typically hunting. And that same applies to Far Cry 3. And in Assassin's Creed 4, if you're wandering, you're basically fishing for whales and exploring a world that is within our own history, the Caribbean. But in both Fallout and Elder Scrolls, you inhabit a world where the lore and the history are unknown to you, and the rules of the world are unknown to you, like radiation or magic, and you're learning everything about this world as you do it, like you're living in these worlds. You could go from point A to point B in either one of these games, and every stop you make along the way, you're literally learning something new. Ooh, here's a cave right here, but this one is highly radioactive, AKA, or this one is full of magic and is gonna explode. Or, or this one is full of vampires, or this one is full of radioactive slugs. There is a number of things that just happen in these games that you would not expect because when you're playing the other games, they're somewhat grounded in reality. Well, other than Dark Souls, but Dark Souls, even once you've explored it all, you're just farming the souls. But these other games, they're not grounded in reality, so you're learning and you're exploring. And that's why you get so absorbed into these worlds. And that's why sitting down right after dinner at 7 p.m., you might not end either one of these games until 6 a.m. the next day when your alarm goes off and sends you to work. I'm gonna go ahead and say it right now. If you set off on a quest for these games, you might as well just totally forget about that chicken for the evening. That chicken is gonna be very lonely today. 
And that's it. That's the list of games that kept me occupied so much that everything in my life got delayed. So, what about you? What games kept you so occupied that you were totally delayed? I'm pretty sure that people have games that are not on my top six list, and I'm pretty sure people got really absorbed in Grand Theft Auto V. So if that's the game, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. And on that note, we want to start doing these top sixes in a unique direction. Now, we have the next few of these already written, but give me some ideas in the comments down below. We really want to know what top six list you guys want us to do. And in case you can't tell from this list, it's no holds bar. We'll give you a list about anything, and I mean anything. Did I say that creepy enough? Well, I'm Infected Crow for Eligible Monster, and I'll see you guys next time, right here at Eligible Monster. From Eligible Mon- I just Eligible Monsterception to myself.